My name is Jamie. I am the CEO of Devoted Columbus, and thanks for being with us this afternoon. So if you're watching us live or maybe later this afternoon or tomorrow or whenever, um, hopefully you're going to get some great information from our lovely panel of vendors today. We have, we're doing our, our first virtual vendor chat. And the reason we're pulling this together is we know so many of you couples are just got engaged and there's really no bridal shows out there right now. So you don't get the opportunity to stand in front of some vendors, ask them questions, interview them, whether it be the people that we pulled for you today or somebody in their category. So today we've got, um, we've got a bunch of categories. We've got honeymoons, invitations, entertainment. We've got bartenders for higher alcohol, jewelry, catering, and so much more. So um, we're going to do kind of a round table today and we're going to go around and let everybody introduce themselves. I want to kind of introduce a couple members of our team real quick. So um, Michelle's kind of helping me out here. And Michelle, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure, I'm Michelle and I run the wedding division at Devoted Columbus. So all of our lovely planners and our wedding day assistants, um, yeah, we make it happen. Awesome. And we also have Amber and Andrea with us today. So Andrea, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Sargent, wedding planner and wedding day assistant. And Amber. Hey everyone, I am Amber Waters. I am also a wedding planner and a wedding day assistant. Awesome, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna get started with our first question today. And it's going to be best tip. So when somebody's booking, um, booking you guys, what's the best tip you can give them? And we're gonna start where my screen is and it's gonna be up there with Jason who runs Avant-Garde Impressions, and that is an invitation and accessory company. So Jason, tell us about you and give us your great tip. Okay, um, again, I do wedding invitations. We do just about all kinds of retail for it, but we're just known for the invitations. And one thing that I always tell people um, when they come in for a meeting, or even if they're just calling us on the phone, um, really is just to, to try to figure out what your style is you know, before you even try to jump into that kind of a thing. Um, a lot of people come in and they, they come to our shop and they see that we've got like thousands of samples and then they immediately can become a little overwhelmed. So, you know, if you can just go on, it can be anything. Uh, don't worry about price or anything like that right off the, the, the get-go. Just look at style and just get like an idea of what it is you even like. So I tell people to go to Pinterest. It could be just a plain old Google search. Um, it could be going on Etsy, you know, whatever, whatever method you like. Uh, Pinterest is probably one of the easiest. Um, and then just get a couple ideas, narrow it down to five or six looks that you like. Like I said, don't worry about price because it's really just about the look. Um, just about anything out there, even if it's really expensive, can be made a different way or can be, you know, altered or tweaked a little bit to bring it into a budget friendly, you know, style. But that first initial look and what you're actually looking for is the most important. If you go into a blind, you'll immediately get a little overwhelmed in that, in that department. Stationary is a little bit more complicated than I think people think sometimes, <laughs> and it's easy to get overwhelmed with it. Thanks so much, Jason. We're going to move on to Jennifer Kahn, who owns Compass Travel. She's here talking to us about honeymoons today. So what's a great tip? And tell us who you are, Jennifer. Yeah, so I'm Jennifer with Compass Travel, and we're a modern travel agency that focuses on younger travelers and does honeymoons and destination weddings for couples. And um, I have a couple of tips, but they're kind of related and COVID related, of course, now in the COVID era. Um, so one would be to get travel insurance. I always recommended travel insurance before this, um, but I think even now um, it's so much more important uh, because things can always happen, unfortunately. Um, and then also uh, to really know the COVID rules and restrictions of the place you're living in and the place you're going to, like down to the letter, and these can change even from week to week. 
Um, and if you hire a travel agent uh, to handle your honeymoon or destination wedding, they'll be on top of all these uh, restrictions all the time. Unfortunately, um, this is a lot of our life these days of, you know, watching those press conferences and going through all the restrictions um, and then letting you know about them so you don't have to, um, you know, spend hours and hours of your life um, going through those. And then so you're not um, stopped at the border or something like that when you're trying to go on your honeymoon or come back. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And we're going to go on to John Wilburn, who is owner of VIP Events Management for an intro and some great tips. Sounds good. Yes, I am John Wilburn. I am the owner and operator of VIP Events Management. We provide uh, most primary services for weddings, and we can provide a level of day of coordination with those services as well. Um, so you can just relax and enjoy your special day. Uh, some, uh, probably the best tip I, I would say that I would suggest asking is, are you going to be our DJ? <laughs> Make sure that you're meeting your uh, DJ um, prior to booking so you guys can ensure that uh, you click and you're going to be working with him for many hours, obviously, and relying on his uh, professionalism. That's the next thing, obviously, to make sure that he is experienced and professional and also has good quality equipment and that you'll have an opportunity to explain your vision uh, of your special day. And he's flexible to meet that for you. Awesome, thank you so mm -hmm. much, John. Sure. And we have Vanessa next. She's with Ohio Bartenders for Hire. And um, I know that is a category that's a little bit unique and very needed. So please give us some tips, Vanessa. And introduce yes. yourself. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Vanessa. I am the owner of Columbus Bartending School, where we train professional bartenders. And I'm also the owner of Ohio Bartenders for Hire, where we send bartenders to weddings, corporate events, or any event. Um, so we can work any crowd um, to from like 25 people to 500 people. All of our bartenders um, know how to serve responsibly. They've had 40 hours of training. They know how to make over a couple hundred cocktails. Um, so we can create any signature cocktail you'd like for your event. Um, the one tip that I always um, tell brides and grooms is to create a budget um, of how much they'd like to spend on beer, liquor, spirits, because it can get out of control. Um, you know, a lot of people just do beer and wine to keep it simple, and that's great. But some people want to add mixed cocktails, which is great. But then they want to add vodka, gin, rum, tequila, um, all of those. And now we have to, you know, have about 10 other mixers to go with it to make multiple drinks. And, you know, a lot of people want to cater to their best friends or their bridesmaids because, you know, Uncle Bob only likes Jack Daniels, but, you know, um, their groomsmen loves you know, Jim Beam, um, so, and then you get into the wine, you know, mother of the bride only likes red wine, you know, mother of the groom only likes white. So I always say it can really get out of hand. You try to cater to a lot of people and what they drink, but people um, are unpredictable. And what do you think they may drink typically? When they go out, beer or wine, they may be totally different at that event um, and drink something totally different. So most of the time people will drink whatever you have. So I always say, try to stick within your budget uh, so you don't blow it and have a lot of liquor left over at the end. <laughs> oh, extra liquor is not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> <Very true. laughs> okay, thank you, Vanessa. Um, next we have Bob with Worthington Jewelers. Please introduce yourself and give us a, some great tips. Well, first of all, I'm not Uncle Bob who drinks uh, the Jack Daniels. Actually, I probably am. Uh, hi, my name is Bob Capace. I am the owner of Worthington Jewelers, uh, located downtown Worthington, uh, right on High Street uh, in 161 on the Village Green, if you're familiar with downtown Worthington. I've been there over 20 years. Um, we specialize in custom one-of-a-kind designs with a you know, strong expertise in diamonds and bridal jewelry. So uh, we're, we're there to help to assist there's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of things people 
need to know that are critical in making the right choice for their you know, rings, because that's something that you're going to have for a lifetime. So you want to make sure you're going in the right direction. You consider the future. You consider, you know, what you what you love, uh, not only today, but long term. And really the best tip I can give anybody, and this applies not only to jewelry, but pretty much anything, you want to go online and read the company's reviews that you're planning on working with or looking at. With, with the resources available, particularly in the bridal market, whether it be the knot, the wedding wire, or Google, you want to make sure that you're getting, you know, exactly what you think you're getting. And it, again, what others have experienced in the past, they're going to note and talk about, you're probably going to experience the same thing. And believe me, people are going to treat you great when you're a prospect and you're looking to spend a lot of money, but then what the result is when something isn't perfect, something isn't going right, and you know how you recover, what you do to make it right. So, so look for that when you're looking at the reviews too, and the number of reviews. Somebody who's got two reviews that are really great reviews, two isn't a very large sample size. So make sure you're dealing with uh, somebody who's reputable, who's got great service, and who can back it up. Thanks, Jamie. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. Okay, we have um, Vincent up next with Russo's Catering. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and give us some great tips when it comes to catering. Hi, everybody. My name is Vincent Russo. I'm the president of Russo's Catering and Events. Uh, we're a full service catering company. We service uh, Central, uh, Central Ohio and Southeast Ohio. Uh, we kind of specialize in buffet catering and catering at venues um, that do not have an in-house catering service or an in-house kitchen. Uh, we can do a lot of different things. We, we offer a variety of services um, from food trucks to uh, prime rib carving stations, you name it, we can do it. But that kind of leads me to my tip. Um, and someone kind of already mentioned where I was going to go. Having a budget is a good idea uh, before you meet with your caterer because there, there, there are a wide variety of options. A lot of times we get um, clients um, that kind of take a look at the services we offer. And, and so, you know, they ask for a variety of different things. And, and then when they get the quote, it's maybe outside of their budget. So it's very helpful for us if you can come in uh, with a budget in mind, and then we can help guide you to the services and the items that fall within that budget. Um, another thing that happens a lot is we'll get just a basic question, hey, can you quote us for a wedding? And um, there's a lot that goes into that, and there's a lot of information that we need before we can provide an accurate quote. So maybe going into the meeting or the phone call with a game plan as to um, what you envision for your wedding, your theme, but then also just some basic information like where is it going to be, uh, how many guests uh, you would like to have. Um, I know early on when you're when you're booking somebody like a caterer, you don't have um, you don't have maybe final numbers, but at least an estimate up front uh, can really help us out. Um, it, it may be just at least a general idea of, hey, are, are you hiring a pizza food truck or are you looking for something that's, uh, you know, a prime rib carving station, you know, maybe um, at least some sort of an idea of the types of foods that you're going to want to have at the event. Um, so maybe come in with some, some information and, and be ready to ask a lot of questions. That's our, always helpful if, if, um, if you've got a lot of questions. And that can help us, um, uh, you know, get some information to you, uh, maybe pull some information out of us. I kind of have uh, a cheat sheet that I go over with every client when they call in. Uh, but the more questions you ask, the better. I will say a day of tip is make sure you have a point of contact um, for the caterers. Um, a lot of times we'll, we'll run into a situation where maybe they've booked a dinner to start at 630 uh, but they're still out running around taking pictures and things like that. 
And for a caterer, it's very difficult. You, we kind of want to know the exact start time so that food's not sitting there getting cold uh, while we're waiting for people. So if you can have like a designated person um, that's dealing with the caterer and the other people providing services for your wedding um, that, that's there on site, um, that, that can be very helpful. Thank awesome. you. Awesome, thanks so much, Vincent. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna go on to our next question and that's gonna be, um, what's the biggest misconception with your within your industry or your company? So, um, so we're going to go back to Jason. So it would be, what is the biggest misconception when ordering invitations? Oh, unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I don't do this too much. So the biggest misconception I think in our industry is people tend to think that custom invitations are extremely expensive and they must cost more than, than um, you know, ones from online or the ones from the kit. And that that's always such a surprise when people come in and they get a quote from us and they're just like, I this is way cheaper than I thought it would be, you know, and people do think that. I mean, I would think if I went into Hallmark and I wanted my card to be specially done, I'd probably be paying 10 to $15 a card, you know, and that would be the case for one card maybe. But, you know, in these cases, I mean, most of this stuff ends up being on average um, what you would spend at a, at a um, getting a birthday card for somebody or a Valentine's Day card. And I, that's what I tell people pricing wise with custom invitations should cost around that. Uh, budget. I mean, if you were getting a birthday card for somebody, budget's going to be around a dollar ninety nine to like maybe two forty nine to three forty nine, something like there. And that's pretty ex what you expect if you just went to Kroger or you know Meyer or, or Walmart and got a birthday card. Um, average. I mean, uh, your average is about three fifty to five fifty, and that's per all set, not just the invitation. So you're talking an invitation, an RSVP that gets mailed back most likely another card that you know goes out with it with hotel information or a website. And then anything above that, like five, fifty, six dollars and up, I mean, that's more of your luxury cards, you know, things like with the full pockets or the, the, um, the thick acrylics or, you know, the letter presses and stuff. And, and that's kind of like at Valentine's Day. I mean, you probably want to get one with a crushed velvet or something like that with the foil for the birthday card. And you'd be paying about $5.99 to $6.99. So it's pretty much average. I mean, I would expect to, to do that, but people just think it's going to be ex just some, you know, ridiculous amount. And it typically isn't. Um, online printing, you know, doesn't usually end up being much cheaper either. Uh, they tend to nickel and dime you on those online places and you don't realize that the quote is only for the invitation. And then when you get into the checkout, you realize that it doesn't have envelopes. It doesn't have an RSVP card. Um, the foil is going to add another $2 per card. I mean, then you get to the checkout and you're like, I thought this said $1.99 a piece. And now all of a sudden I'm at like $2,400 on my total, you know, and, um, you know, or if it doesn't, sometimes it comes in the mail and you're getting like, something that looks like like little kids Valentine's cards it's really thin card stock or something you know and you want to know what you're getting you know as well too you know coming into the shop you can test and you know feel the thicknesses of the paper know what you're getting and knowing that it's a good deal so just realizing that it's not crazy expensive it's it's just not as much as people think so true thank you Jason and we're gonna move on to Jennifer. What's one of the biggest misconceptions when somebody's booking their honeymoon? Well, um, mine is actually very similar to Jason's. Um, and that is a lot of people think they're going to pay more for their honeymoon by booking through a travel agent. Um, and that is not true. Um, they think their trip will cost more. Um, but in a lot of cases, that's not true. Uh, a lot of travel agencies like Compass Travel don't charge fees for most of our travel planning services, most of our leisure travel planning services. Uh, so the price that you would pay to book a trip through us is the same or sometimes less than what you would pay if you booked yourself online um, or directly uh, through the hotel or the cruise line. And then you're getting our extra services as well. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that 
the way travel agencies are paid a lot is through commissions from these suppliers. Um, and that's already built in to the hotel cost, um, the uh, you know cruise line cost or the tour cost or whatever, um, even if you're booking directly through them or booking um, through something like Expedia. Um, so then just that website or the hotel itself is just pocketing that extra money. So really you're paying to use a travel agent whether you use one or not. So you may as well get that extra service um, for what you're already paying for. I want that want extra that. service. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Jen. And John, how about you? When somebody's booking their entertainment, what um, what's one of the biggest misconceptions? And I know you have a few things of entertainment, so maybe you could go with a DJ or what so, you feel about. Um, I mean, honestly, there are multiple misconceptions, but I think the biggest one is that anybody can be a professional wedding DJ. That's not the case. Uh, a lot of couples decide that they want their cousin or uncle to do it, or even a DJ that has some experience in some industry, like a bar uh, or nightclub, um, you know, done, done special events like that, but it's not done a wedding. It's a totally different, uh, different scenario. I mean, a, you really need a wedding DJ, somebody that's going to be there to help you with a timeline that's going to make sure that things happen on time to make sure the vendors are working together as a team. And um, obviously somebody that uh, is a great MC that can, you know, really uh, make some great announcements for you and, and just kind of make sure things are flowing for you. So really, that's probably the biggest misconception is that anybody can be, you know, a wedding DJ. And that's definitely not the case. Yes, I have to say we love the professional DJs. We yes. hate pushing play. <laughs> And next, um, Vanessa, what's a misconception maybe for, well, I'll let, I'll let you just go with it, which part of your company. <laughs> All right, thanks. I have, I have two misconceptions. I'll, I'll make them short here. First one is I don't need a bartender because we're just serving beer right? Um, and they can just grab and go. Or, you know, you can get the wine in the little bottles now, and so they can just put them in ice, and their guests can just grab and go. It's very dangerous, because uh, no one can regulate how much a certain person is drinking. And that's what I train my bartenders to do, to make sure they are watching how many drinks one person is having in an hour throughout the night, how they're reacting um, and so forth. So um, I know if they're just serving beer and wine, it, it you know all we have to do is hand it across the bar. Um, I, I know it's an extra cost that maybe some may not want to incur, but trust me in the long run, um, safety, I think is more important in making sure everyone has a good time. Um, but, you know, it doesn't impose that on other people and, you know, they stay safe. My other misconception that we get a lot is that we just serve alcohol. Um, we, we do a lot of mocktails as well. So we can create signature mocktails for events without alcohol. Um, so you don't have to just serve tea or lemonade. We can do, we've done lemonade stands where we um, muddle berries or herbs together and make a totally different cocktail that's refreshing, um, you know, where you don't need to put alcohol in it. Um, we do hot chocolate stations um, as well, coffee stations, everything like that. Um, so they can be just as fun um, that don't have to have alcohol or we can add alcohol alcohol um, to it as well. So um, we don't have to just serve alcoholic uh, beverages. Um, we can create and serve mocktails as well. Awesome. Thank you, Vanessa. And Bob, how about you? Some misconceptions when purchasing jewelry. Oh, there's never a misconception there, right? Um, you know, I heard what Jason and Jennifer, you know, stated and it's that whole online mystique. You're going to save all this money and you cut out the middle person and you're going to get a better bang for the buck. And the stories I've heard and even experienced like traveling, uh, traveling's great until something goes wrong. And then, you know, having somebody like Jennifer behind you, it makes all the difference in the world. The stories I can tell you, and I, I've only got two minutes, but the stories I can tell you about people who bought diamonds or jewelry online to save money. And they thought I can educate myself. I know color clarity. And the worst thing you can do, the worst thing is buy a diamond or a ring sight unseen where you physically don't have it in your hand. And not just one diamond. If I gave you any diamonds 
and put it down on a little stand, you'd look at it and go, that's very pretty. Well, let's compare it to three or four like diamonds or comparably priced diamonds because the paper says it's G color, it's SI1, it's this cut, it's that cut, it, it does or doesn't have fluorescence. You, you think, oh, that's going to be pretty. That's kind of like, you know, marrying someone based on what their driver's license looks like with, when you cover up the picture. Uh, not a good idea. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to try to bail someone out of a bad situation. I'm constantly tightening, tightening their stone because the way it was set, I, I'm, you know, asking them about, you know, what kind of warranty they got. And it was such a hassle to deal with and to ship things back and forth and have to argue with people. And again, no phone calls returned, on and on. But please, people, before you do anything, come talk to me. It's free. I'll give you comparable pricing, very competitive pricing. We also do upgrades. So when you want to go from a half carat to a one carat, we're able to stand behind that and give you 100% of what you paid. We'll give you a lifetime warranty, not only here in Columbus or Worthington, Ohio, where I am, uh, but across the US, we're, we're part of a preferred network that will be able to service you with independent jewelers throughout the US. So there's a lot of good in, in making that big, big purchase decision and make sure you're, you're investing your money properly. Thanks, Jamie. Absolutely, thank you so much, Bob. Okay, for um, Vincent, um, one of the biggest misconceptions when catering. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, and it's, I think, more of a, maybe a miscalculation. Um, it, it, and this probably goes for all um, the wedding professionals and, uh, the, you know, the vendors that are involved in the wedding. It, um, the clients sometimes maybe miscalculate the value added, um, you know, how efficient and how easy the professionals can really make things for you. So what, what they tend to do maybe is take on more than they should. And for example, maybe in the catering business, we'll go ahead and handle, you know, our hors d'oeuvres or something like that. And, and you go ahead and take care of the dinner because we're going to have some friends and family that will bring some cheese trays or something like that in. And so then there's, there's a miscalculation of what all is really involved in doing something like that. So you know, you, you end up with maybe something not presented very well, not enough for the number of guests that you have. Nobody's focused on cleaning up, restocking or anything like that. And it ends up just really falling short. Kind of a silly thing that we saw happen recently was on the beverage side. Um, hey, don't worry about the soft drinks. We're just going to take care of that ourselves. And you have maybe a couple hundred guests and somebody came in with a couple of cases of warm soda, no ice bins, no ice, not, not nearly enough drinks for everybody. And you have all these guests saying, hey, where can I get something to drink? Looking at us. And it's like, we didn't take care of the beverages. I'm not sure where you can get something to drink. So just be very careful about those sorts of things. I mean, as a bride and groom, you have so many things that you have to take care of and so many things that you have to think about on that day. The, the, the items that your hired vendors can take care of for you, you, you really should. Um, it, it's well worth it, the extra couple of bucks that you're going to spend. The vendors are professionals. They know how to handle these things. You're going to do them efficiently. And it's going to be seamless. You're not even really going to know or understand what the vendor did for you. And that's what you want. You just want a seamless day. Um, and, and so that's kind of the biggest thing that we run into is just a miscalculation of what is involved in some of these things that are just seemingly simple and easy, but uh, really it, it's more than you think. So true, so true. Thanks, Vincent. I'm gonna throw this to some of our planners since we have three. Are you ready? I'm just gonna pop this into you. So how about from any of you can chime in. Um, a misconception when it comes to booking a wedding planner. Any of you? Oh, I have one. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, th I think that I, 
I have an interesting perspective because I have worked as a venue coordinator and a wedding planner. Um, so I think a lot of people will say, oh, well, the venue that I booked has a person and they're just my planner. Friends, that is not at all true. <laughs> um, the venue coordinator will help you in whatever way that they can, but they are there to be a venue coordinator. You want someone that's gonna be with you from start to finish. Um, they can, if, if, if there's any issues with other vendors, they can be on the phone with them. They can be figuring out, hey, what's going on here? If the photographer is taking a little bit longer, they can be that liaison between the photographer, the couple and the caterer. So the wedding planner or the wedding coordinator or the day of person ties everything together as opposed to the venue coordinator who's really working for their venue. So that's a, that's a thing that I hear very often. Well, my venue's got a person, that's all that I need. Let's, let's think about that a little bit more. <laughs> we hear that a lot too. That's a really good one. And I'm gonna go backwards and maybe Andrea or Michelle can answer. How about a tip, a good tip whether it comes to booking a wedding planner? Um, I think all I right, wanna... Andrea. <laughs> I think I want to piggyback um, off of what Bob said earlier about reading reviews and getting referrals because there are so, the industry is just so um, overrun, not overrun, but just has so many planners, um, some with, you know, wealth of experience, but then some with just just getting out of school or they just got married and they think that they can do it. And it's not that simple. It really does take experience to be a wedding planner. So I say, you know, I completely agree with what he said and what Amber said, you know, read the reviews about your planner, who you're thinking about hiring, um, because it's not just, oh, what went great, but it's also what didn't go great and how they fixed it, you know, how they stepped in to handle the problem because it's our job for the client not to know that the problems happened. So um, I think that's a great tip to read the, read the reviews because you can't do it on your own as much as people think that they can, they can't. So that's my tip. Yes, I couldn't agree with you more. Reviews for all wedding professionals are great. I, I just wanna say, you never wanna judge a book by its cover, meaning you need to dig a little deeper just because they might have this gorgeous, beautiful website doesn't necessarily mean they're, they are what their website looks like. So get look for reviews, but the best reviews are just asking um, other people that have used them. You know, sometimes those star reviews, I, I don't know, but I'd, I'd rather ask a person who's used them, how do they feel about them? And um, there, there's nothing better than great reviews. So yeah. Awesome. So our next question, and it's our last question, Michelle, if there's any questions on Facebook, let us know, but I'm going to go through the last question and then we'll, we'll do a round. Um, this is what question should our couples be asking that maybe they aren't? So what, how, what are they missing that they need to be asking that probably isn't at the forefront of their mind? And we'll start with Jason. All right. Um, for me, I think it's timeline issues. Uh, people go online or they call and they ask, or even at a bridal expo, they say, when do we need to have them mailed out by? When do we um, you know, need to, uh, well, basically that's the, the only question. When do we have to mail them out by? And then they wanna come in then to get the invitation. Now, I mean, saying that, now we can definitely help them even if they are needing it today. Um, you know, that's the bright side about having uh, in-house printing as well. But um, you really want to know, you want to ask, when should I come in to start planning the process? <laughs> um, you know, because you could take a lot of stress off of yourself by coming in just a little bit earlier. You don't have to order them the day that you come in. I mean, people can come in and plan out a design, give us ideas. You know, we can come back and forth with some drafts, uh, make some changes. And then when you're ready to order, then we can, you know, get you that timeline saying, okay, it takes about a week and a half for the style that you've done. Um, so let's make sure we order by this date. Uh, if we tell you that your mail date should be, you know, May 16th, 
Um, that doesn't mean come in at May 16th and decide what you want to get made. <laughs> that means you should probably come in at the beginning of May or the end of April, you know, if you want something that's, you know, going to be very time consuming or something that's special done. Um, but that's the biggest misconception there with asking the wrong question is when to mail it out. Really, when should I come in? Um, there's, you can never be too early with stationery. We got people to come in a year before which is awesome because, you know, we can get the design ready and back and forth a couple emails and say, great, we'll talk to you in about six months when you're ready to order, um, you know, but at least, you know, that bride, there's no stress. I mean, they don't have to worry about anything. They, if something happens like this whole COVID stuff, you know, say, hey, you know what, we're going to put it on hold for right now. The new date is next year in July. And I was like, oh, that's easy. I'll just change the date, change the place, change the time. Okay. And I'll talk to you in a year. You know, but there's no reason to come in at the last second in a panic, pulling your hair out to try to get this stuff made, you know, when it's all just a matter of planning the right time and not just the time you saw on the internet somewhere in some forum as to when to mail them. So true. Thanks, Jason. That's great. And then how about you, Jennifer? Um, what questions should they be asking that they just aren't? I think it's should I be considering a non-all-inclusive resort or thinking about, you know, how important a non-all-inclusive resort or all-inclusive resort is compared to, you know, what destination they're interested in too. Uh, because a lot of islands in the Caribbean have a lot of all-inclusive resorts. Um, but then there's a lot of islands too that have little to no all-inclusive resorts or the non-all-inclusive resorts there are much better than the all-inclusive resorts. Um, so if someone's interested in one of those islands, um, but they're set on an all-inclusive, then we really kind of need to think about, okay, what's more important, um, the location or having that all-inclusive experience. Um, and Hawaii, for example, um, doesn't really have any all-inclusive resorts. They kind of have one, but it's insanely expensive and it's not something um, that many people do. So for people who are interested in some, a place like Hawaii, um, you know, you're not going to be able to get an all-inclusive experience there, unfortunately, or staying within the U.S. like a lot of people are um, right now. And there's not many all-inclusive resorts or real all-inclusive resorts um, in the U.S. So that's kind of something um, to think about. Very good. Very good. And yeah. how about John? Um, a question that couples should be asking, but they forget or aren't asking them. Uh, that's great. I'm going to start with a question that everyone asks that they should ask, but maybe not the first question. Um, everybody asks about price. And I'm like, okay, um, I can do that, but I'd rather tell you what we do first. It's sort of like uh, calling a car dealership and saying, I'm interested in a car. I want a car. How much is it? You know? And okay, what features do you want? You know, <laughs> same kind of scenario with, uh, with any of our services, really. I mean, whether you're looking for a photographer, a videographer, a DJ, I'll give you real one quick example of, uh, you know, how, you know, we're different some from, let's say from other entertainment or DJ companies. Uh, I have, we work with a lot of photographers. We have our own. Uh, they've told us stories about working with DJs that sounded good in the mic, played good music, but weren't really great coordinators. Uh, bride and groom comes to the DJ, says, we want to go do our first dance. Okay, that's fine. DJ makes their announcement, plays their song. At the end of the first dance, they realize the photographer's not even in the room. So they missed that on film because the, the couple came to the DJ, you know, let's say a half an hour earlier than they had told them. Uh, the photographer and they were eating dinner in another room. So those are small details behind the scenes that we really specialize in. It's very important uh, to, to everybody, to, you know, to every couple. Uh, so really the best question, I think the first question should be, what are some of the ways that you help to ensure our special activities happen, happen on time, and that our vendors uh, are engaged, involved, and working together as a team? So that's probably the best question I would say that you could ask uh, a vendor you know, going into it up front so you can understand the level of experience, understand what they're going to be able to do for you. Uh, because if uh, their answer is, well, we don't really do that, you're probably not working with the right person. So. Excellent. Thanks, John. And sure. Vanessa, you're up. <laughs> What's a question that they should be asking that they're not? 
a lot of people, most of the time I, I get the question, but a lot of people may already assume they know, but it's how much alcohol they should purchase or how many, how much cups or ice um, and so forth. Because a lot of people, um, as we heard, they, they um, assume that their um, family or friends they know are going to drink the same thing um, or that they would typically drink this much um, when they go out and, and so forth. Um, but like I said, when they have an event like this, it could be totally different. So I always say, um, you know, please ask me how much to purchase so you don't underbuy because that's a feeling no one wants to have. No one wants to run out of product halfway through the event. Um, and we don't want, you know, that to happen either. Uh, but we also don't want you to overbuy because some people buy so much that they could have two to three events and then they think, you know, how are they going to store it and so forth. So, um, so I always um, recommend, um, you know, or, or asking, you know, make sure to give them numbers about how much alcohol, beer, wine, breaking it down, mixed cocktails, cups, napkins, straws, ice, mixers, everything, you know, we can help with just not the alcohol, but um, anything extra they would need with that as well. Excellent. Yes, I know that our team has gone on many alcohol runs due to insufficient alcohol quantities. So, <laughs> okay, next, Bob. Um, a question that couples should be asking you guys when booking or when ordering jewelry. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because as couples begin the process and they're, they're, they're looking, you know, to choose a jeweler, Obviously, they ask their friends. They can do the online research, as we discussed, how important that is. But there's really determining factors that you got to uh, determine what's the, you know, what's the most important um, to you. Because there's big box stores, there's chain stores, there's local independents. Everybody brings something different to the table. And whether you walk in with your grandma's ring or you walk in with a $15,000 budget, you should get treated the same. And it's really important that you're gonna get service properly. And again, it's not all about how much you're gonna spend. It's about taking that magical moment in your life and making it as special as possible. High pressure commission salespeople, there's no place for them in any world. And particularly when you're selling jewelry, because there's already such a stigma you know, with jewelry and the price and it's 5,000% markup, which I can assure you it's not, well, at least not at my place. So <laughs> I can only speak to that. Um, but keep in mind when you hear how inexpensive they are and you keep hearing it over and over on the radio and TV and they're, they're running constantly on the radio and TV, someone's paying for that. It's usually the consumer. So, you know, the more, the more they say it, traditionally the more expensive they are. So you got to really buyer beware, do your research, do your homework. And it's best to have in jewelry particularly because it's going to be a long-term relationship. It's not just for an engagement ring or wedding bands. It's a lifetime to have somebody you can trust that you can go to to get questions answered, that you can you know, deal with uh, ongoing. That's really, really important. So thanks, Jamie. Awesome. And Vincent, how about a question that they're forgetting to ask when it comes to catering? Thank you. Um, I don't know if it's so much they're forgetting or maybe don't want our input on some things, but uh, <laughs> uh, we're always happy to give guidance on, on helping somebody select the menu. And that can go along um, with quantities as, as with the bartending type things as well. But it's always a delicate balance for us because we don't want to step on the couple's toe, toes. I mean, we, we want things to be done the way that they want them done. But at the same time, we also want to kind of give advice and, and urge them to do things that we think will help make the day a better day for them and for their guests. So, um, you know, sometimes they don't seem too interested in our advice in terms of how much of something they should have whether they have enough variety or maybe too much variety, their menu's too large. Um, and so we're, we're there to help. We're there to give guidance. We're happy to do it. And, and so uh, maybe 
maybe just asking for more advice and guidance on on planning the menu. Excellent. I know I, when planning menus, I I'd love to get the chef's input too. Like what what do they make the best? What's their specialty? So I guess don't be afraid to just ask. And maybe too, if you don't see something on the menu, ask if they can do it. So absolutely. We you know we can do almost anything. And as as with many uh, catering companies out there, it's just how much of it do you want to put down in, in a pamphlet? I mean, you could give somebody an entire book. Um, so yeah, there, there are all kinds of custom things we can do. So just never be afraid to ask. Yeah. And one thing in particular, you know, going off to of maybe some dietary restrictions, um, may, maybe you'll have um, a bride or groom not able to eat something or not want a particular ingredient in a menu item. Um, we're happy to accommodate the bride and groom and maybe some other special dietary restrictions with some special plates or dishes that are just for those people that have the restriction rather than um, kind of make a menu that accommodates the restriction. Then you have the entire party um, that's eating uh, that, that altered item or, or that special item. Um, so, and that's something that we're happy to do. And maybe they don't ask us enough. They, uh, a bride and groom maybe will plan a menu off of some dietary restrictions for just a few people. Um, and then you have uh, the entire party is dining that way with, where maybe they wouldn't have had to do that. Right, right, makes sense. Okay, and Michelle, how about when it comes to a wedding planner, what question should they be asking and they're, they're not asking? So I think this actually is a good question for several of our vendors out there, especially day of. So if they're um, if they're with you on the day of, it is what happens if your planner or your DJ or your photographer is sick and can't do can't be there on your day. Um, I never hear that question. So I think it's important to ask that you've got you have a lot of companies who it is just one person. So what happens if they become ill? Um, what is their backup plan? How will they take care of you? Um, do they have a team that you know is with them throughout the process and can just jump in without, with, without um, thinking about it? Or do they have to bring someone else in? So I think that that's a really good question to ask. Especially during COVID. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's the last question, but I wanna see, Michelle, was there any questions that were asked? Or does any of our, do any of our wedding planners have questions for our vendors? Or does anybody have any last words? <laughs> Some final thoughts. We've got a few more minutes if anybody has any final thoughts. Do, 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 do. No, okay. <laughs> well, today has been awesome. I hope that um, our listeners are getting some valuable information from these wonderful wedding professionals we have here today, whether, you know, of course, I'm going to say you need to book all of them if you don't have them booked. Um, but they've got some great tips and great advice. And if you ever want to hear um, from any other category, please let us know. And we're going to try to do this the end of next month. And so the end of February and the end of March. So we're going to be bringing professionals together for you guys guys and we're devoted Columbus you're on our Facebook page host hopefully listening to this and um, we have a bunch of wedding resources not just this but coming up we do have our um, our resale market that is going to be at the McCoy Center on March 14th we have the wedding experience wedding show that's coming up at the Crown Plaza in April or April 18th. And we also have our new magazine that's coming out this spring. We're very excited about it. We're both um, going to be Columbus and Cincinnati based. So look for that magazine. We always have money saving coupons on our wedding directory on our website. So make sure you check those out there. And we just opened our um, wedding resale shop. So be sure to come in. This is open Tuesday through Saturday now. So year round, 
re, you know, wedding consignment, whether you have stuff to sell or whether you want to come and shop, we're open for you. So whatever your needs are, and we've got planners, we've got wedding day assistants. And if you need connections to any wedding professionals, we're here to help you guys. So thanks for being with us this afternoon and come see us again. Bye.